My name is J.R. McKee, and I'm young and great. My name is J.R. McKee. I'm basically a music executive, um, develop talent, find talent, market talent. Um, I mean, we sell music, we sell entertainment, basically. I was living in Mississippi because I went to Mississippi State University for college. And I was living in Mississippi and um, me and my friends, we had a big record. It was like a, a top uh, 15 record in the country. Um, I was just managing them. I wasn't, I've never been an artist. But nevertheless, um, you know, it didn't work out. Like it, we made a lot of money real fast and then we went broke real fast. And so when my girl got pregnant, I needed to get a job. And I didn't want to get a job in Mississippi because everybody thought I blew up. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go to Atlanta and get a job where don't nobody know me. And that's why I ended up in Atlanta. The biggest lesson in it was things don't last forever. You know what I mean? Because the, the pro my problem at the time was, I, you know, we blew up fast and everything I got, I spent because I believed this is just the beginning. You know what I mean? This, this is going to last forever. We, you know what I mean? I'm thinking, oh, shit, fuck this money. We got more money coming in. It's, it's going to last forever. And it only lasted like nine months. And so, so, yeah, the, that was the, the biggest lesson was things don't last forever. You got you to gotta prepare. When you get money like that, you got to prepare for it to end eventually. You know what I mean? Even if it don't be as short as nine months, it might be two years, it might be three years, it might be five. But, you know, artists don't stay hot forever. That's an extremely rare thing. And so that was the, the first and biggest lesson I learned about the music industry. Um, going back to when I was 19, um, I was actually a club promoter. I was throwing parties. And so when you throw parties, um, the first thing you're going to get is artists want to perform at your party because there's a bunch of people there. And so you automatically get tied into that life with the artists and, and you know, the producers and everybody. And basically, at the point in time when that happened, I wasn't still trying to be in the music business. They blew up. I was just their friend, and I really, my mindset at the time was, they're gonna make a lot of money. I'm a businessman, I'm going to teach them how to flip that money. That was my mindset at the time, but just being on the road with them, I started to see things that were missing from their career, and it just kind of transitioned into me managing. How did I take the step from manager to music executive? Because in that same situation, when I was 19 years old, I saw all of us, me included, come home broke, and my realization was, if you want to make money, you got to own it. Because I was cool with the owner. Um, he didn't like me much because I was smart. And they, he didn't want smart people around because I'm telling them the right thing to do. But what I saw from him is if I really want to make money in this industry, I have to own it. And so I created my own record label. And so I knew right then, like, manager is not going to cut it. How do I stay committed to them even when they get down? That's tough, you know, because anytime I work with somebody, one of the things I want is for them to want it better than me. Because if I want it better than them, it's not going to work out. Um, no matter how much I plan and no matter how much, you know, I maneuver things and how much money I put into it, it all falls on their shoulders. You know what I mean? And, that, and that's another thing I learned through my, through my lifetime of the music business is it's, it's up to them. You know what I mean? It, it don't matter what I do. If they're not in it to win it, then it's not going to work. You know what I mean? And so when they are down, you know, I try to just, it's, it's, it's hard because there's not much you can do. I try to inspire them, of course. Um, and I try to just, you know, bring them good news. Artists hate bad news and they get it almost every day because things never go the way they imagine it to go. So I try to just, you know, maybe bring them good news, but it, it's, it's tough because it's really on their shoulders, not mine. You know what I mean? I'm just there to guide them and get them advice. I mean, it's, it's almost more like the, the family side, not the friend side. I mean, you got to have arguments. You know what I mean? I just had an argument yesterday. Um, I mean, it just, it just, you know, I think the, the deeper part is just dealing with people that can get over the argument fast. You know, people who hold grudges, they're, they're not the right person to be in business with. And then also, like, when you're picking these artists, because the luxury of, of my job is I get to choose. Like, nobody's forced on me. So when I'm picking these artists, I'm always picking somebody who's kind of the same mindset as me. Like, I don't, I don't work with artists that I just don't see the connection between me and them. And so you, you got to be able to um, get over things fast. Basically, and that's that's for me too, because they I don't want to say hurt my feelings, but they disappoint me all the time. 
all the time. And so I got to be able to get over it fast, too. I can't be walking around mad and they got business to handle. So, you know what I mean? So it's just, it's, it's really being able to get past things because it's always problems. All this stuff ties in together. It's, it's, it's being able to, to lose. If you can't lose correctly, like if you don't get over things fast, if, you, if you're one of those people who hold grudges or you're one of those people who are constantly thinking about yesterday, yesterday is gone. You know what I mean? That happened yesterday. What are we doing today? If you're one of those type of, type of people, I don't think you can win. You got to be able to lose. If you don't lose correctly, then you can't win because everything you're doing is a series of losses. I learned from this loss that put me here. I learned from that loss that put me here. But if you stuck on this loss, you just drifting backwards. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you got to be able to lose to win. First thing I would like to say as far as investing is investing my time. You know what I mean? Investing my time into learning how to invest. Because one of the things that I learned fast when I started seeking other investments was you have to educate yourself. You can't just jump into something. You can't just jump into the stock market that you know nothing about. You can't just jump into real estate that you know nothing about. Even though you got the money, you know, you're going to lose it fast. You know what I mean? So, you have, so the first thing you have to do is invest your time into learning how to invest. Um, but I'm, right now, I'm invested in cryptocurrency. I'm invested in real estate. Um, I'm investing my time into learning the film side. That's something that, you know, I just want to, I just begun to like really try to figure out before I make my first move. But uh, I studied the cryptocurrency for a while. I studied real estate for a while. And um, I'm not exactly studying stock, but what I am studying is financial advisors who are going to take my money and put it into stock. So I've met with a lot of financial advisors. I met with friends who have financial advisors just to learn about them because I don't have the time to learn about stock and I, I'm just not willing to learn about it. But I do want to know about the person that's going to be handling my money. And so that's why I met with several and that's why I'm talking to my friends who have them. So I at least invest time into learning about that since I'm going to be giving them my money. But two, two sides to that. Inside my house, my father, he's a, you know, an army man, a navy man. So I was kind of raised as a drill sergeant, like, like from a drill sergeant. He, he made me a businessman. He made me, I'm talking about at 12 years old, he had me read marketing books. He had me reading just all sort of investment books and to the point where if I didn't read it, I couldn't go outside. And if I, if I didn't pass his test about the book, I couldn't go outside. So I mean, I, I literally was forced to study how to become a businessman. So on that end of it, um, my father molded me in Ohio and on the street side of it, because I, again, I lived in Mississippi as well. In Mississippi, I had a, a big sister. And so I never had to fight, I never had to do anything. Like she was whooping everybody ass for me. But when I got to Cleveland, it was literally just me out there in them streets. And so I had, to, it, it just toughened me up. I had to fight my own battles at that point. So from the street side of it, you know, Cleveland made me tough. And from my, inside my house, my father forced me to be a businessman. And obviously that's still what I'm doing today. One of the most key books in my life, Rich Dad Poor Dad, he made me read that when I was 12. And what I learned from that is the sole reason I'm kind of in the position I am today. Um, basically, what I, what I learned from Rich Dad Poor Dad was two very important things. Is A, when you don't have money, it's how to make things happen. And the, and the way that, even the way you become rich, period, is by serving other people. If you find a way to serve somebody, then you don't need money. What can I do for you to get me to where I need to go and that's also helping you? You know what I'm saying? And you just keep repeating those steps and next thing you know, you look up, you have all the money in the world. So it, Rich Dad, Poor Dad teaches you like, it's, it's not about the money. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's what are you doing? If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, the money's gonna come. You don't have to chase money. So that's, that's one of the things Rich Dad, Poor Dad taught me. And the other thing that it taught me that it, is how to construct a business. One of the things still to this day, and I just had an argument with my artist about this yesterday, still to this day that I use is I only spend 10% of the money I make. You know what I mean? If I'm making 100000 a year, then I only got 10000 to spend. You know what I'm saying? Because if I'm not investing into what I'm trying to do, I'm not going to make it. You know what I mean? I'm not going to make it. I, I'd, rather, I'd rather starve before I give all my money away for frivolous things. You know what I mean? So, so the reason that helped me so much is because there's so many ups and downs. 
there's so many ups now. Like I had a period of, of two years where I didn't make any new money. But because of the way I, I, I lived, I knew how to live so much under my means. It didn't bother me at all. You could have never told I wasn't making money because I looked exactly the same. I still live the same way. I'm still investing into my artists the same way. You would have never knew. But you the only reason that was possible is because of the book teaching me 10% at all times. So if I got, if I got a million, I only have 100,000 this year. You know what I'm saying? And so that's something that kept me alive to this day and that I still live by to this day. I didn't much take advantage of. You know what I mean? Now I live by it, but that's, that's a hard one to teach a kid. You know what I mean? Because you want everything. You want the car, you want the jewelry, you want it all. So that's a hard thing to teach a kid. But, but um, now, that, now that I'm thinking beyond, like now that I have four-year plan, eight-year plan, 12-year plan, it's all in perspective for me. So I don't, I don't buy anything like, you know, clothes, all that stuff. Like I, I really don't buy it. You know what I mean? Like, discipline is everything. I have in my, in my phone a list of things that I can't do. You know what I mean? I can't watch TV six days a week. I can't eat snacks six days a week. I can't touch my phone to 9.30 in the morning. Like, I am extremely disciplined. The one thing about all the wealthiest men in the world is you can set your clock to him. You know at 8 a.m. he's walking in the door. You know at 10 p.m. he's tucking his kids in. Discipline is the key and the road to wealth or the road to whatever you want to be successful in is discipline. I messed my credit up in college. <laughs> I messed it up bad. My credit score right now is a 792. You know what I mean? Um, the, the thing that woke me up about my credit, it, it really had nothing to do with wealth. It was I couldn't buy my mother a house without it. And so that's, that's, that's what changed me about my credit. Like I knew it was important, but I had money, so it just wasn't that important. But what you're what you going to learn once you get to a point is there are things in this world you can't do without credit. You know what I mean? And, and things that are important, like... Everybody sees, you know, oh, he bought his mom a house, oh, he bought his mom a house. You see that with those success stories, but what you don't know is it's impossible without credit. Because it's the same with your taxes. You can't buy that house unless you're reporting your taxes correctly. There's so many things that you have to learn being a, I would just say being a grown man. You know what I mean? And credit is the most important. But I, I think for me, I'm thinking future. Like, I know when I have my kids at 12 years old, we're talking about credit. You know what I mean? I'm already getting them credit cards. Little $500 credit, teach, just teaching them everything. That's, that's my biggest thing now is like, don't let the future mess up. You know what I mean? I, it took me so long to learn so many things that if I would have learned, if I would have paid attention more, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm like the most, I don't know what, how to put it, good kid. I was always a good kid. And it's still so many things I miss. And so I'm just trying to make sure the next generation don't miss it. I think even not just the music industry, but anything that you feel like you really want to do, are you willing to put in 10 years of work before it happens? Because cause every, everything you want to do in life, most likely will take 10 years. You know what I mean? If you want to be in the NBA, you got to start young and you got to work 10 years until you're 19 to get to the NBA. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it, Anything, like even the, the stuff that looks fast, no, it still takes 10 years. It takes at least 10 years of basketball every day to make the NBA. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be a rapper, it's going to take you at least 10 years in the studio before you pop. It's just anything you want to do in life, are you willing to put in 10 years without it happening for it to finally happen? There's just so many, so many people out there that don't believe that they can be wealthy or, or even financially free, don't even know what it means. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, if you learn about money and you and you started looking at money different you know money is a tool that's 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 all money is it's a tool money is fake by the way it's not real it's a fiat money like a, a dollar is really probably worth three cent altogether. you know what i'm saying so money is fake so you don't don't get caught up or obsessed with money your goal should be to become free of money you know what i mean your goal should be to 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 be able to put yourself in a position where you make enough money that money is no longer on your mind you know what I'm saying? Like the song Money on My Mind, you shouldn't sing that song. <laughs> money should never be on your mind. You should be free from money. So I think, you know, for me, what I want to teach people is, is just about finances. Because even if you worked at McDonald's, you know what I mean? If you worked at McDonald's, I don't know what they, $12 an hour, um, $300 a week. I don't, I don't know, but I'm guessing you can find a way to take $60 out of that every week and invest that $60 into something to where I can, if I had to start over and had to go work at McDonald's, I guarantee you in five years, 
I don't have to work at McDonald's no more. The bottom line is, it doesn't matter where you are financially, you can change your situation. And I think that's the biggest thing. People get stuck. They feel like, oh man, I work at McDonald's. I can't, you can. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to have a job at all and be able to become financially free. Because this is the thing I told you earlier. If you learn how to serve people, you'll be taken care of. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's just about getting, getting, changing people's minds to learn that I don't, I don't, you don't have to make any money. It doesn't matter your situation. You could become financially free in three to five years.